Hi Divas! This is the start of a new Will It Bling series. Uh, what can you put your spare diamonds on and put together projects together that are useful and creative and you can still um, make something, you know, with your spare diamonds. But it's not something else you have to hang on the wall or out of your window. So this is for specialty diamonds and you know, any other kind of diamonds. But what I'm doing is if you get the sticker packs, you can get quite a number of them at a time. And these are little white flower pots that I purchased from Discount School Supply. Lots of great crafty things down there. You can get in packs of 12 or more. And I'm just putting a diamond painted sticker on the pot. As you can see, I am then going to, um, when I'm all finished, I'm going to polycrylic them. And on some of them, I'm going to use the um, E6000 or B7000 glue and do something around the top of the pot. The inside of the pots are glazed. The outside are a little bit rough. You can paint them first if you want to. Uh, and then you can use all your spare diamonds and, and things on them. So... I'm going to play around a little bit and then show you what they turn out like. I'm going to be giving them away as Easter presents this year. Put little plants, potted plants that I'm going to get at the nursery in there. Um, you know, it's the middle of February uh, when I'm doing this and Easter will be here before you know it. So does it bling flower pots? <laughs> we shall see. Okay, so we have these fun little flower pots. I've pulled out three different glues, all of which I know will work um, to use around the top. I'm just going to get out any um, diamond painting pen and any colors that may or may, you know, that, that would probably go with it. The, the glues that I've chosen are the E6000, called the E6000. And you need to use a well-ventilated area for this one. You could also use Gem Tack. It says it's a permanent glue, and you can embellish jeans, phones, purses, shoes, glass, and more with rhinestones, pearls, glitter, and more. And also, another one that would work is Aileen's The Ultimate Multi-Surface Adhesive. Um, professional strength, I use. So, you can use just about anything as long as you give it time to time to dry in between now what you can do is you can go online and search pixel patterns or kind of cross stitch pattern something like that and you can use one of their ideas for a pattern across the top I think I'm just gonna go in some kind of a striped fashion or use all the same type of colors I think I'm gonna go with some of the colors that are in here um, now, I don't know what will go around it. I know this one will be okay. I don't know how many will actually go all the way around. I have plenty of white. I can always use white. Uh, let's see what else is here. Put a dark stripe across the top, and then maybe a white, then a yellow, then a lighter brown. Just kind of mix them up. Let's see what that looks like. So let's use the darker one, and I won't get around all the way. Maybe I'll have to... S I can use maybe this one to see. I don't know how many will go all the way around. So I have to I have to try it. These are leftovers, remember, so you won't always have enough of one color to go all the way around. So you just improvise. Use something that is close to it. Pick out your colors ahead of time, is what I suggest. I'm not going to fight with glue, guys. I'm just not going to fight with glue. I'm not going to fight with it. Come on. This is just... I have new glue, but I don't like opening up a new bottle every single time every single time I want to use it. Instead of using a pin I probably can use something else. 
What can I use? I don't want it to dry completely before I get all the way around with it. Get close to the top as I can, and I want to get them on right side up. Good grief. There we go. That's decent. And this dries fairly fast, so it's white glue and it dries fairly quickly. I like that. Let me go get a toothpick. Yeah, and that's not too bad either. If you just smooth a little. I don't want to do too much at one time. And I would imagine you'd have to do like the front rows and then after that dries then you can do some of the back rows. I got halfway around on that side. Now I'm going to take the glue again. And this stuff dries clear. I've used it a number of times. I just don't like to have to... I'm not going to use up an entire pot of glue on the project that I started, so I don't like to have to um, reopen the nozzle of the glue things every time I use something. That really frustrates me. So if you have any suggestions on how you keep your glue nozzles clear in between using them, I would love to hear the suggestions. Because what I have is not working. You know, I was just thinking, I have trays, divided trays that I haven't used yet. And I had purchased these little trays come apart. <coughs> They're small enough to use for this kind of project. They come apart and they click together as well. And they're in this little case. So you can do one at a time. And they have a little spout feature on the end if you're going to put it back in a, um, in a baggie. You can see the little, the little spout feature on the end. Can you see that? I should use the pink one and show you that, I guess. But they click in place. And that way, they have the ridges on them. So instead of this, pour them in here. That way, I know what colors I've used for each one. How about that. I'm going to put a little bit of glue under this sticker so it hasn't completely stuck the way I wanted it to. Like it has its little open spots. So. Before I go and polycrylic it down, I want it to stay stuck. So I was thinking of a layer of white underneath that, so I can use a layer of white just underneath this one. Then I'll go with one of the like the greeny yellow one I have here. So I'll empty the white here. Do that one next. Start in the center. I'm going to go right underneath the ones I did before so that it looks like they're on in rows. I don't want them to look like they're like all wonky. Like that one does. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind making the mistakes if you're not going to make them then. I can tell these are going to be a little labor of love. They're going to take some time. So what do you do when you're doing a project like this? Um, what do you have on in the background? Do you watch YouTubes? Do you put on Audible books? Do you put on your favorite music station? Do you do it where you can watch the TV? Do you watch your, your cat or your dog do funny things? Don't forget to like and subscribe. There are benefits to membership that you can check out in if you click the little membership button down below. That will help keep my channel on the air. And hey, if you 
have any ideas about what to bling for my Will That Bling series, let me know. In an upcoming series, I have an, a light, a candle, like an electric candle that I'm going to be putting some stuff on. I have a shirt, a t-shirt. Uh, you know I've already blinged a pair of sneakers and a hat, a baseball hat. What else would you like me to try to bling? You let me know. I would like to try to bling all kinds of crazy things. I'm going to try to bling a diamond painting tray. I know some people have tried that. Uh, my friend Gemma is very uh, courageous when it comes to blinging things. She's got a wonderful imagination and she's done a patio table and a chest of drawers and she's created a Christmas tree out of a traffic cone and a room divider that, that hangs like a curtain in a doorway. Oh my gosh. She has so many creative ideas. So hopefully I am learning from her fun things to bling. So if you've got some ideas of what you'd like to see me try to bling, let me know in the comments below and I will try to accommodate you. Okay, so there is there's a ridge of brown and a ridge of white. And I'm going to use the green, like the, the greenish one. And I think I'm going to take out the little tray for that so I can shake it around easier. <clears throat> do not roll, please. Do not roll away. Come on. Stop. See, th things just don't obey me. <laughs> That's what I have a problem with. Stop. Just sit there, please. You're not behaving. Ugh. I have some peach leftover diamonds as well. I think I'm going to use some peach leftover diamonds. They will look good. Okay, well, I've got the project started. And I'm not going to do the whole thing, you know, uh, with you sitting here. <laughs> that would be rude. So I'm going to do this and a whole bunch of others and I will show you, come back and show you the project when indeed I've got enough done. Okay? We'll see you soon. One thing I do want to say is as you're going around, realize that unless it's straight up and down, if it flares in any way, if it, you know, go, um, widens out, or if it gets skinnier, realize you are going to have to spread out the drills in a different way or squeeze them together in a different way. Like every once in a while, leave one out if you need to make it smaller or, or spread them out a little bit wider in between them. Uh, you're, it, you just can't make straight even rows in some places depending on how uh, gently it slopes in or out from each other. So do bear that in mind as you're going around and around and around your pot. Because generally flower pots are smaller at the bottom and wider at the top and there is a flare to it. It is not just straight. Uh, so far this one is gentle and I, I'm okay with putting them underneath each other but I'm just noticing just a little difference here. Anyway, I'll show you more when they're done. This is the one I started yesterday and I did the, five, the uh, six lines I've, for these little pots, it takes six lines of, um, six lines of drills. So what I'm going to do is base my patterns from here on in on six pixels wide. Six pixels wide. This one's cute. I'm going to leave this as is. 
This one I thought I would try a zigzag pattern. You know, a ziggy zaggy pattern. Which means that I took my six colors, I put them each in these little trays so I can wiggle them around, and I'm going to take one at a time. I'm going to put my bead. I'm going to start in the back on this one because just the way it works, I'm going to put a bead of glue around the top edge and go one at a time, one, two, three, four, five, six, in the color along the edge all the way around. And when I get to the second row, I'm going to set it off by one color. Like where there was brown, I'll now put a... Um, I'll now put a beige and then start with brown on the next one. So it'll have to go around more than once. Um, I do have several uh, shades of brown that I will mix together probably to get uh, to get more. But that's okay. I don't think it matters that much. I have other browns in here that I can I can use. Oh, here's one. Here's a darker brown too. Here's one. That's kind of closer. Yeah, that'll be good. So if I mix the browns together, it'll still make a nice, uh, a, a nice way around. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do, and we shall see how it works. Let me put on the first row, and and show you how I'm going to put on the first row. I'm going to start somewhere toward the back, and use my glue, a little bit of glue. I'm not going to do too much at one time because, you know, what I'm going to do one, make sure they're right side up, and I put them in the order that I wish to put them on because that way I don't have to think. <laughs> When I'm going around and around and around, I don't have to think. So let me do two rounds of this, and then I'll show you how I do. Second row. Right after this. It is really fun to go looking for patterns and, and uh, checking things out. That's part of the fun of, of doing this. Okay, so now you see I have a row of wacky colors here. Now I'm going to start the second row just to show you how I'm going to start it and ignore the ink on my finger. Uh, my fountain pen went ballistic today, so anyway. We go right underneath the first, if I can get the glue to start coming out correctly. I'm going to put a bead of glue right underneath it. And I'm going to start with the last one here. The only thing I don't know is how it will line up in the very back. You know what I mean? How it will, um, how it will, the colors will line up in the back or not. I don't know that. Because I don't know if it'll end on the correct color to create the pattern. So we'll have to see how that goes. And then if I do a third row like this, you'll see how it's going to turn out. How I'm hoping it will turn out all the way around. Okay, that's row two, and it still looks a little bit of a shambles, right? So let's start row three. I'm going to twist it so I can get my glue in the correct... Ooh, don't go overboard now, please. I'm going to smear it out. I keep the nozzle of the glue really clean because that helps. Now, instead of the peach, I would start with the one before it. So I would start with green so that the peach is right underneath it here. And the brown. So it kind of looks like it zigzags. is what I'm going for. And I'm not sure if the pattern will look like it's swirling back and forth. It may just look like it's zigzaggy. It just looks like it's diagonally striped. I don't know. Because I'm not sure. Oh, yes. Okay, to repeat the pattern, 
this is going to look diagonal this way, all of them. But in order to look wavy, I have to repeat the pattern the opposite way after I get through. And I'll do that on the next one. I'll show you how to do that on the next one. Peach. Where's the brown? So, if you can see, it kind of looks a little bit like stripes. Like diagonals. You can see in the dark. If you can keep it going, <laughs> you can get the pattern going. One, uh, uh, one after the other. So, I'm going to turn it off and show you how all this kind of like ends. <laughs> okay, if I can keep the pattern going, we'll be all right. Let me see if I can get all the way around. You won't believe this. With these six colors, I got all the way around and the pattern matches. Oh, oh my gosh, what I ended with right before the beginning. I am in awe. <laughs> I love when things work out that way. Oh, it'll be nice with per six colors. These drills um, on this little pot are perfect all the way around here. Uh, again, if you are interested in these particular little pots, uh, they go quickly. <laughs> the pattern goes quickly. Uh, I have the link down below to discountschoolsupplies.com and you can get a pack of 12. Okay, so this is how this pot came out. See it stripes across the top? What I'd like to do now is try to get a wavy pattern going. And I think once it goes down to the bottom, I have to make it come back up, which means I have to go uh, in one direction and then mirror it, and then mirror it, and then mirror it. So in the next pot, I'm gonna try to do that. Oh my goodness, it looks like I go through all six and then I come back the opposite way, but not repeating. And then go forward and then backwards. Oh my goodness, okay, we shall see. The only thing that I wanna caution is like some of these stickers went up over the lip a little bit. And um, so I just was really careful with the pat. So I just was really careful with the pattern right in around the um, in where it came up on the lip. So, that's the advice on that one. <laughs> okay, so this didn't get the desired effect that I wanted, the up and down. I have to really plan that out, but I do like how that turned out. It's, ugh, come on. It's got like a double stripe around it. I kind of like that. It's got like a double stripe and a single stripe, except where it meets up <laughs> in the back. The pattern didn't quite match right, but that's kind of cool. And that's way on the side where nobody's gonna notice it, so it's kind of cool. So, so far, I have three, three, different tops. Which one do you like better? I'm going to try to find something else to do with the tops in others while these dry. Okay, so this one I'm going to do differently. I went on Google and I found some patterns that I thought might, uh, for tiny, tiny flowers that I thought might work. Stop it. And, um, I decided to create my own little pattern and with the colors that are in the little pot as best I can and it's a six pixels wide so um, I'm going to have to smear a bunch of glue like in one area and then make sure my rows are really straight when I put them on and do it this way and repeat this Okay, so uh, I'm going to have to be careful. See, it doesn't go all the way to the bottom, so it could be five wide, but I'm going to use a row of white, or I could actually use a row of the dark brown across the bottom. I like that too, I think. I think. Should I do the dark brown across the bottom as well, because I have lots of dark brown? That would ground it, or 
I could use the dark green across the bottom. Should I use a dark green across the bottom instead? What would that look like? And that would make six colors. I like the dark green. Why don't I do that? Okay. Sorry about the traffic sounds. They're just awful. So what I'm going to do is I'm filling up the little tray with the colors. I use my Arteza watercolor pencils. And I'm going to attempt to do this pattern. Now what I think I'm going to do first is do the dark a bunch of the dark green on the bottom to get a good base then to make my flowers go up from there. And I even can do, if I do three rows of white in between, I can do a dark... Maybe that's just too much, but I kind of like that. If this is three white... Three white... So that this is in the middle. I like that. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that then. So I want this to be the very center. I want a row of green across the bottom. So let's do that first. Okay, the dark green. Shake, shake, shake. That'll give me a good base, a good grounding where to start from on this. And for each different pot, depending on the colors, I'm going to come up with a slightly different pattern. That's the plan, Stan. All right. So the very center of this, I'm going to do the three rows right around the center of the, the image here. I don't want it to be too off-center. Now, what I wanted to do in the very center, see it should be like right about there, I believe, maybe? And then I'm going to do the white on either side. And remember, I needed six, so that's two rows. So I've got, I'm going to put the white, white, white as three. That works out fine. All right, so far, so far. Now the next row in on each side, just making sure it's nice and evenly situated. Now the nice first row in on each side. It's going to be one white, one peach, and three white. <clears throat> so do one white on each side of here. Then one peach, the dark peach. Then I do three white up on each side. And this is, by the way, how you read count of cross stitch patterns. And basically I'm taking my images from those patterns. Okay. Now the next row on each side is... I'm just doing enough for two at a time here. Is a white, uh, a peach, eggshell, peach, white, white. So I have a white. Okay. That's not bad. It's not bad. I'm just making sure they, they stay straight. They're not getting a little wonky here. Then I need the next row on each side. I'm going to have to extend the green out this way for a bit yet first. All right, so the next row in on each side is the light green. One, two, three, four. The dark peach all the way up. One. No, 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 no. It's here. It's this one. It's the dark. It's the light. Two lights. And then a white. <laughs> yes. Now it's the light green and all the darker peach. See, this you have to concentrate on a little bit more than the other pattern, right? And then it's for the dark. 
There we go. I'm trying to keep it nice and even with the greens on the bottom so that they're, they're all straight up and down. Now this one is a brown and two lights. And then two whites. Okay, and that's the end of the pattern that I did so far. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna do the green the bottom green all the way around. I'm gonna do three rows of white with that dark blot in the center each time. So I'm gonna go all the way around with the dark green on the bottom first. And that will establish the rest of the uh, the bottom row because I like the way that figured out. Okay, I'll show you how that comes out when I'm done. Okay, so here is the result, and I am so psyched that, okay, so these two look like they're headed in the same direction instead of opposite each other, but the rest of them work the pattern, and I did have to, at one point, uh, add an extra row of white in here, but it's at the very back, so I'm not real concerned about that. But look, look at that. Oh, I like that. I think I would like would have liked a little more brown or maybe um, some a, like a dark row right across the top if I wanted to. I could very I think I'm going to right across the very top do a row of dark brown and that will kind of like um, situate the whole thing together and bring the, the brown from the bottom into the top. I think I'm going to do that and it'll look like a band across the top. I think I'll do that. I'll show you that in a moment. Okay, so I do like that brown layer around the top. That is a seventh layer. What I would do, if I were planning on doing it for another one, and I probably will do this on the second pot, what I would do is move the green row down. I would start with the brown across the top and work my way down the pattern and use the dark green right under this lip lip a little bit. It can go underneath that lip just a smidgen and it would be just fine. I think I'm going to do a pot just like that because I have enough to uh, to do a, a second set very easily here. I really like that. I kind of like that pattern. Um, the, the other thing I might change is since this, this um, acro is really close to the white color, I think I might use a like a yellowish or a more mustard color in there so it looks more like uh, a flower. So that's what I'm going to change. I'm going to change the to do a mustard color on the inside of there instead and everything else will be the same. And I figured out the next pattern. This is kind of how I wanted it to be to begin with. <laughs> this little uh, you know, zigzag pattern, but I, right here at the very back, I had to like squish it in a little bit, <laughs> make the pattern fit a little bit better right around. If you're not looking for it, you won't see it. So here we go. That's this one. And I'll show you the next. Okay, so here's another pattern I developed. A little flower and leaves. And it kind of comes around the sides like that. The only problem is, right in the very back, I kind of fudged it around a bit. But um, maybe I could have done an extra white row in between, something like that. I'd have to work it out because I didn't quite work that out. But it's in the back, so isn't that cute? I like that. Because I have another couple patterns. Speaking of patterns, I am going to work up the little patterns and, um, you know, get a, get a little form together so that you can, I can share the patterns with you. All right, wait till the end of the video to figure out how you can get all these patterns for yourself. Okay, this is another pattern. I really like it. Um, I had to switch to the light pink in the back because the darker pink I ran out of. But I really like the way it looks in the camera. Not quite the way it looks in my hand here, but it, I like, and it pattern came out perfectly in the back. I could not believe it. 
can't see it as well because of the lighter pink. So the darker pink works out better on this one. I like that a lot. Oops, I felt like I dropped one off here. It's still wet. But oh, I kind of like that. I like that pattern. If I can come up with a darker than this pink in the next one, maybe I'll do it again. Okay. That's the next one. I want to give you a final recap on the uh, little pots. You've seen some of these already. And they're just the basics. Oops, I think he's sliding back in here, so I can't get them all out at the same time. But here we go. You've seen some of those. And I have found a pattern I really liked. This is a cute one. That's a cute pattern. <clears throat> I want to um, put the polycrylic on it and seal them as well. But I found, oops, it looks like I've got to fix that one, which I can do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I like this pattern with the, um, the leaves and the flowers on the top. And at the back, it works out perfectly if I add an extra row of white in between the flower and the leaf. It's really fun. It's fun that way. This is cute. I have to finish, fix that one um, before I seal it, which I will do. But I, I really like that pattern, and I've done a bunch of them that way now. Um, with different colored flowers at the top. So now I have a set of 12 little pots that I am going to use for Easter presents. You can use them for Mother's Day presents. You can get these at, um, <clears throat> at discountschoolsupplies.com. I will provide a link below that uh, it does have, it is an affiliate link. I'll get a tiny little bit of a kickback if you get them from there. But they're the perfect little size. And as far as patterns go, I made up the patterns myself. Um, I just went to Google and said six pixel patterns. And I made something up. I played with it on just regular scrap paper, drew lines on regular scrap paper, and created them myself. If you're interested in copying these patterns, I'd be glad to make them available for you. Um, let me know, and I'll take pictures of them. I'll, I'll make them up nice on graph paper and take pictures of them for you if you're interested in any of these patterns. Another thing that I, that I found that was really useful got these, I think, from Tamu. I'm not sure anymore. But I've gotten a couple of these uh, a while ago and never tested them, never used them. What they are, is they are sectioned little sections of a tray, diamond painting tray, that pull out. And what I found really useful is putting one color in each of these six sections. And that way I could pick and choose from them as I went along the pattern. Really, really handy. If I can find a link to one of these, I'll put that in the, the box below. But they're available. Um, they came with a little spoon and a little brush. Um, but um, let me see. Yeah, this doesn't help me at all. <clears throat> but they came in clear and peach, and they came in different colors. But I got a lighter color so I could see, you know, see the colors I was using. So they, it came in very, very handy. I really appreciated it. Uh, so a divided dish in some way is very handy in these type of projects. All right. I hope you enjoyed the outcome of these little pots. I had a lot of fun making them. So will it bling flower pots? 
yes, it does. <laughs> Quite cool. Um, I'm going to put a little plant in them. Uh, there's no hole in the bottom, so I'm going to put stones in the bottom and sand in the bottom and then potting soil and then plant the plant in it. Or maybe I'll just put a cactus or something in them um, with like less potting soil and more sand. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for joining me for Will It Bling Flower Pots. Stay tuned for more Will It Bling videos. Put your suggestions down below as to what you would like to see me bling just for fun. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Divas. I will see you soon. Yeah, I want to show you my little cactus pots that are now finished. This were my spare drills project. Remember? Um, we got the uh, little cacti at our local Home Depot. They were on sale. And I put all 12 of them. But I, they don't, these pots don't have a hole in the bottom. So I put a stone in the bottom and then I put some sand and um, squished the, the root, the root ball. And then stuck it in here, put some sand in here, and I'm going to water just a little bit before tomorrow. Some styrofoam that wants to hang onto the side here. Um, yeah, but <clears throat> aren't they cute? I'm going to give them away. We have tomorrow's Palm Sunday, but uh, we have our Easter family gathering for our half of the family tomorrow. And uh, so I'm going to give them out tomorrow. My little Easter gift for everybody. Along with uh, the extra butterflies <laughs> that I'll show you in the next video. All right. I just wanted to show you the end product of this Spare Drills project. And thank you for hanging out with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Each little like that's free <laughs> um, goes to help the channel and uh, gets the channel um, uh, sent out to others who might like it. So let me know if you've done flower pots. Uh, do you have any spare drills projects that you would like to share with us? I'd love to see them. Happy Easter, everyone. Bye.